on this example, we know sine of alpha is going to be negative four over five. We also know that alpha itself lies in quadrant number four. Our goal here is to find the half angle of cosine. So cosine of alpha over two based on this information. So as we get going on this, what I always like to do is just draw a nice basic right triangle um, based on the information that we know. So because sine of alpha is negative four over five, what I'm gonna do is just draw a nice triangle here, label where alpha lies. And I know from Sokotoa that um, sine is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna label our sides as four and five. And I am kind of disregarding the negative for the time being. Um, you'll notice for the half angle formula for cosine, we are gonna have to find cosine of alpha um, cosine of alpha is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to have to find this adjacent side length. I'm going to label that as B for the time being and use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find B. So in our case, we can say that's four squared plus B squared equals five squared. And then a little reducing, we can say four squared is going to be 16 plus B squared is going to equal 25. Isolate the B squared by subtracting 16 from both sides. 25 minus 16 is going to give us 9. And then apply a square root to both sides. And we're going to get B is 3. Now you will notice that I kind of disregarded any negatives along the way. And why I do that is I think it's just easier to visualize using all positive values initially. We are going to have to take into account the negative as we think about we're trying to evaluate cosine of alpha in order to fill into our formula. So cosine of alpha is gonna be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we can definitely say three over five, adjacent over hypotenuse based on our triangle. Then the other thing we have to be careful of is what sign is cosine gonna have when we're in the fourth quadrant. So in thinking about that, I like using this phrase, all students take calculus, which just gives us an idea of Everything's positive in the first quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, tangent, and then cosine. Now we're in the fourth quadrant, right? Alpha lies in the fourth quadrant. So cosine is gonna be positive in the fourth quadrant. So I could include a positive here, but I don't really need a plus sign, but do take this into account which quadrant your angle lies in, because sometimes that's gonna be positive, sometimes that's gonna be negative. All right, next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna fill into our formula over here. And you may notice as I fill in here, we do have a plus and minus out in front. So let's be a little bit careful as we do this. I'm gonna initially just fill in my cosine of alpha, which we said was three over five. Now let's think about this sign out in front. Should it be positive or should it be negative? Well, how we make that determination is we know the quadrant that alpha lies in, right? We're in the fourth quadrant. So a little bit of side work over here. The fourth quadrant goes between 270 degrees and 360 degrees, as we know from these quadrantal angles. But we aren't just looking at alpha, we're trying to figure out cosine of alpha over two. So what we wanna do with this inequality, this compound inequality is divide each piece by two. So the left side, the middle, and the right-hand side because that'll give us an alpha over two in the middle. So 270 degrees divided by two makes 135 degrees. Alpha over two still stuck in the middle. And then 360 divided by two makes 180 degrees. So what this tells us is alpha over two fits between 135 degrees and 180 degrees. That's squarely in quadrant number two. All right, so as we're trying to make this determination, should this be positive or negative out in front? Well, we're in quadrant number two for our alpha over two. In quadrant number two, all students take calculus, only sine is gonna be positive. So since we're dealing with cosine, we want that to be negative out in front. All right, the only thing that remains is a little bit of algebra to reduce this down and make this look nicer. So we don't like leaving our solutions with fractions inside of bigger fractions. So what I'm gonna suggest is let's go ahead and multiply both numerator and denominator, both by five in this situation. Now this is being done underneath this radical. So bring along the negative from the outside and the square root. 
Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this five and distribute to both these terms in the numerator. So one times five is going to give us a five. And then five times this fraction, which means dividing by five. So we're multiplying and dividing by five. That'll create a one or their inverse operations. So we're going to be left with a plus three up in our numerator. But that little fraction goes away. And then we have five times two in our denominator, which is going to make 10. All right, a little bit more reducing down here. We can go ahead and say five plus three makes eight. Bring along our 10 in our denominator. And then further reducing here, we can say, well, we have a fraction uh, that has multiples of two, both in numerator and denominator. Let's reduce that down to four over five. Now we could go a step further and rationalize our denominator. I'm gonna leave our solution just like this for now. Um, Hope this helps out. I think this covers most of the basics on like, how do we get these signs along the way? Uh, Pythagorean theorem. This throws students off quite significantly. The uh, figuring out where is alpha over two and making sure you get the right sign out in front here because alpha over two fit in the second quadrant as opposed to the fourth quadrant on this one. So hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working through these.